Hey guys, it's Chris with Bottle Cap Barbecue, and today is a day that I've been looking forward to for a while. A couple weeks ago, a bunch of us were in a live stream with Cooking with James, and we all started talking and we realized we wanted to do a massive collab. So, I don't even want to mention all the names of all the channels that said they were going to be doing something today, but look in your feed, explore around, and I'm sure you're going to be seeing a lot of pork chop videos being released today. Didn't matter what, what how you did it or what kind of you're, you're doing. The point was, let's just get all kinds of different ways of cooking pork chops out there so that we can spread the barbecue love and show how there's different ways of doing different things. So that's what I'm doing today. Now again, I'm not gonna mention every single channel out there because honestly, I wanna say there's like 15 or 20 different channels. But as I remember which ones are doing it, I'll go ahead and link them down below. So go ahead and look down in the description box, see all the different channels that was, that's doing this massive collaboration. Off the top of my head, I know is Cooking with James, Cooking with CJ, Josh and Babe, Daddy Dutch Barbecue, and a bunch of others. So please, check all of us out. Um, let us know what you think. And if you are inspired, please share your pork chop video. So let me show you what I'm gonna do with my pork chops. Now, I gotta warn you, I've never done pork chops before. So, it'll be an experiment, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna turn out delicious. Let's get going. So I just picked up these center cut bone-in pork chops. These things are thick. I wanna say they're about maybe an inch and a half thick. And, and honestly, I'm not gonna do a lot of trimming on these things, because uh, old wise men once said, pork fat rules. So I'm not gonna be doing a lot of trimming because um, also what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be hanging these in my pit barrel. So as all you pit barrel owners know, the more fat that drips, the more they sizzle on the coals and release that steam and goodness up inside the meat. So um, I'm not gonna do a whole lot to these. Um, I'm gonna just go ahead and rub them down. And honestly, I'm gonna treat these a lot like I treat my ribs. Um, so I'm just gonna do a, a one layer of the Cosmos Q Hot Dirty Bird. Make sure you get all the edges. And our next layer is going to be, uh, again, Cosmos Q Sweet Honey Pecan. I absolutely love this rub. This is probably my favorite rub from Cosmo. Been on the rub for about 40 minutes now while we got the pit um, fired up. All right, while the pit finish is getting ready, uh, we're gonna go ahead and get our hooks put in. So we're gonna find the bone and we're gonna go maybe about an inch below the bone. Hang just like that. You do that for all of them. Throw in some apple chunks. Probe in here. So I'm not sure how long it's gonna take. I'm guessing maybe about an hour and a half or so, maybe two hours. Um, my pit you normally runs at about 280. Um, it's a little cooler day with some humidity, so it might change a little bit. But we want to take the things to about 145. Now the next part of this pork chop meal is actually smoked Brussels sprouts. Now if you're like me, when you're a kid, you didn't want to eat these things unless they were smothered in some kind of cheese sauce. But now that we're growing up, smoked Brussels sprouts are absolutely amazing. So what I've done is I've cleaned off the leaves, um, uh, pulled off the outer yellow leaves, Put these in the microwave for about three minutes to get them softened up. Now we're gonna put a little sauce on them. So what we have here is two tablespoons of olive oil, about one tablespoon of minced garlic. I know I'm cheating this time. One tablespoon, a little bit more. Uh, one teaspoon of ground mustard. One teaspoon of smoked paprika. 
one teaspoon of kosher salt, one quarter teaspoon of fresh black pepper. Okay, that mixed up. It's gonna be like a little loose paste consistency. I'm wearing this glove because you want to do this not soon after the breast spots come out of the microwave because you want to get them loosened up and you want this on going on when they're still a little warm. Okay, now pour this over the Brussels sprouts. Every bit of this out of there. And if you want to make more of this, you can. Um, I actually, um, when I'm just flat out grilling them, I like to brush, brush this on like mid-cook. What we're going to do is we're going to work this in so they all get coated. And you will have some left over in the bottom and when they're done, we'll brush it on as a last layer. All right, get this on. No? Okay, now that they're warm, and the reason why we warm them up is because they're easier to work with um, when, you, when you're using, using skewers. For my pit barrel, I have these awesome skewers that have a hole in them so you can hang them. Uh, but if you're just using a flat out grill, just use normal scoops, uh, skewers. And we're gonna, come on. All right, here's our two skewers. All right, we're just gonna hang these on there, um, right next to the pork chops. The pork chops have been on for about 20 minutes, so these are going on about 20 minutes after. My right, pork chops have been on for about half hour. I'm gonna go ahead and give these things a look and give them a spritz. You guarantee you can't see that because of the light, but these things are looking good. Um, this spritz is the same thing I use for my ribs. It's uh, two parts apple juice, one part apple cider vinegar, and one part bourbon. I'm loving this spritz. One thing I also did want to point out, you probably can't see it, but um, I, I put the Brussels sprouts on. They're hanging on the other bar. One's hanging over here on this end, the other one's hanging here on this end. That way they're far away from uh, the center of the, the coal basket. And then I, I'll rotate them about halfway through. That just keeps them um, direct, from being directly <laughs> over the coals. The last part of our pork chop meal is smashed cheesy red potatoes. So these things have already been washed off. Um, I'm making more than what you probably need for this recipe. I got a bunch of people coming over, but basically you want to estimate maybe about two potatoes per person. Get them washed off, have them, put them in quarters, and then you want to do chunks about like that, just so they, they cook evenly. Okay, once you got them cubed up like this, go ahead and throw them in the water in a pot. When the water's heating up, throw in a couple of uh, beef bouillon cubes. This is just going to add another layer of flavor. And you're going to cook these up just like you cook up any other mashed potatoes. Um, give them, bring them to a boil, then simmer them for about 20 minutes or so, just until they're, 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 they, um, they squish, they're tender. Okay, just brought the pork chops in. Uh, they're reading about 147 to 150, so these things are done. And it's only been just shy of an hour, maybe about 55 minutes. Things look awesome. So, all right, so let's get these hooks out. And we're gonna spritz them one last time and then cover it with some foil. Let them rest. All right, the Brussels sprouts just came in. And just look at the color on these things. I'm telling you, this is my favorite way of doing Brussels sprouts now. So, and if, um, so they've been on for about a half hour. Um, and a good way to tell if they're done or not, just take a sharp knife and just stretch up for tenderness. Yeah, they're all tender, so. All right, get things, things wrapped up, keep them um, warm. Oh, also, um, I, I, I took the, the leftover um, seasonings that was in the bowl. I added just a little bit more of olive oil to get loose again. Let's do one last brush over this stuff. Just a little extra pop of that seasoning. Then we're gonna wrap these in foil until everything else is ready. All right, so it's been in probably about half hour. Um, it takes a little longer because I have uh, more 
then you probably would need. But this is what you're looking for. Um, you know how to mash potatoes. Basically, if you can push them up against the wall and they smash, they're done. So I'm gonna get these drained off and we'll go on to the next step. Okay, now that it's drained, um, you can use a masher or you can use a spatula or a spoon, whatever you got. Throw in some butter so it starts melting. Use however much looks right. I might be using more than you'd want, but okay. And what, I'm not gonna smash down every single thing just like you would with uh, mashed potatoes. We want, we still want chunks, chunks in here. So we're, we're just gonna knock down the big pieces. The nice thing about this this recipe is it's, you, you get different size and textures. And that's not actually all I'm gonna be done right there. At this point, it's just mixing everything in. So we got the butter in there. We're gonna put some some milk, some creaminess in there. And if you if you think it needs more butter or milk, just add as needed. This is looking good. Don't want to overmix it because you don't want to change the consistency. Actually, I might add a little bit more milk. And while you're mixing this in, go ahead and add some salt and pepper to taste. That's what you want to see. You want to see chunks in there. There's some finer bits, just like mashed potatoes, but then there's those nice chunks you get to chew on. Okay, the last thing you do want to do, add in cheese. Now, I usually like just using cheddar. Um, I ran out, so I have a, a Mexican mix. But use what you got. And you don't want it too cheesy, you just want enough that it melts down and the extra pop of flavor. Okay. That's done. All right, everything's ready. Last thing I want to do is I've heated up some of my candy apple barbecue sauce. Uh, if you haven't seen the video yet, I put this on uh, some ribs and it was absolutely fantastic. So I, I, I'll link it, the video for that up above. Go check it out. It's just enough to get that classic uh, apples and pork chop flavor or applesauce and pork chops. All right, let's give this a taste. So first thing is I'm gonna open up this pork chop. I'll show you guys the inside. Make sure you guys can see this. Uh, sorry for the light, guys. But this thing is like dripping with juice. There you go. A little better. Nice smoke ring on it. It's just dripping with juice. See that? It's good. Really good. <laughs> I don't eat pork chops a lot. So this is a nice new experience. Having it over the charcoal at the pit barrel, you get that classic charcoal taste. There's a slight um, bite with the pepper from the rub. And you get a little bit of that apple from the barbecue. Really good. So potatoes, you know, I've, I've, I've made these potatoes thousands of times, but I already know what's gonna taste, but see there's cheese, and butter, Creamy. There's a little bit of cheese to it, not too much. And again, because of the different textures, you get a little bite with the skin and the different sized potatoes. All right. Now I brought some pretz. Now I've always just grilled it over over a flame. This is the first time using the pit barrel. Nice texture to it. Nice color. You can see that. The inside still has a good bite to it. It's not, not soft, it's too soft. Mm. The mustard powder gives it that kind of 
tanginess to it. Really good. All right, guys, this is an awesome meal. So, thank you all the different creators out there that are doing um, hashtag pork chop day. Um, again, if you just found my video, uh, look down below. I'm gonna have a link to all, all the different channels that I know are doing it. And as I discover more, I'll put them down there. Um, this was a, a, a fun thing to do. I mean, a bunch of people out there that have never really met, so some of us have met each other, but we're all just YouTubers. We've never met each other. We're, I, I consider a lot of them my friends. Um, and we're just having fun. Um, so give this pork chop dish a try. But if you don't like this one, go check out one, one of theirs. There's lots of recipes out there, lots of different ways of doing it. Um, and if you don't have a certain grill or something like that, there's lots of different options out there. I know somebody's doing air frying, somebody's doing straight, straight up grilling, somebody's doing pan fry. It's all out there, so. And hey, also, um, if you like what I'm doing, go ahead and hit that like button down below. And if you want to see what more I've been up to, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Hit that bell um, button so you get notified when I go live. Um, I am going to be doing a lot more videos here in the next couple weeks. So keep your eye out on a couple things. Um, I just surpassed uh, 130 subscribers. So it's kind of a pretty cool thing. I've only about been two months into this thing. So, uh, so be on the lookout for something special about that. But other than that, guys, keep on grilling.